Hello, Baokim. Okie dokie, here we go. Um, this is the torsion angles and Ramachandran, Ramachandran plots video. I'm actually going to talk really slow in this one because conceptually, um, this is a super abstract topic. We'll do some visual activities with this in class, but I think I can get you, I think I can get you started with the video. So then this video you should be able to, after watching, you should be able to describe the three torsion, that's my symbol for angles, um, and a protein backbone, so we're not talking about side chains at all. You should be able to analyze a Ramachandran plot and draw a dipeptide given, um, this is phi, this is psi, and this is omega. All right, here we go. Right, we're gonna start here. I'm gonna start by drawing. So I'm gonna start by drawing just the backbone of a tripeptide. So it's gonna be N C C N C C N C C. Now for the torsion angles, they have some unique symbols since we're only looking at the bonds along the backbone. That's just these bonds right here. The way that we differentiate all the atoms is the NH3 is actually gonna go down here. So that's the NH3 plus. This is the first alpha carbon, so it gets a little um, subscript H. This is the first carbonyl, so it gets an O for oxygen. And then here's the amide nitrogen, so it gets an H. And then same here, H, O, H, H. And then this is the, car the C terminus, the COO minus. Okay, so again, for torsion angles, we're only looking along the backbone, so the bonds that are shown, shown, the straight lines here, those are the only bonds that we care about. Okay, in a protein, this bond, when we talk about torsion angles, doesn't count, and this bond doesn't count. So the bond to the N terminal nitrogen and the bond to the C terminal carboxylic acid, they don't count. So from there, we can label the other bonds. So the peptide bond, that's this one right here, and this one right here, those are both omega. And omega is this funky W with the curly in the middle. So in a, tri a tripeptide, we have two omega bonds, and that is the bond between the carbonyl and the carbonyl of the amide and the nitrogen of the amide. From there, we have this next unique bond, which is between the carbon, so carbon and a carbon. And this one right here is psi, like that. P-S-I. The way that I remember this is that if you look carefully, there is a C on its side, right inside of the trident. And that represents this C and this C. So psi is the only one that connects the carbon and the carbon, the carbon alpha carbon and the carbonyl carbon, which leaves only one unique bond type left, and that's the nitrogen to the alpha carbon. And this one is this symbol right here, which is phi, P-H-I, P-H-I, and then these two again were omega. So if you notice, along the background, we only have three unique bond types. Oops, I got one wrong in there. Hold on, not wrong, I just labeled this wrong. My bad. Oh, no, I had it right, I had it right. P-H-I. So if you notice, again, we only have three unique bond types, phi, psi, and omega. And what you'll also notice is that, I'm gonna go ahead and erase some of this so it doesn't get overly cluttered. Right now, with this um, tripeptide, we only have one residue that has all of the parts, and that is this one right here, this NCC right here. The other two, because they're connected to the termini, don't have a phi, a psi, and an omega, but this one residue right there has a phi and a psi. So what you'll notice is that in a peptide, in a protein, each 
amino acid has one of each of these kinds of bonds. Now again, the ones that are connected, except for the ones that are connected to the N-terminus and the C-terminus. Okay, so they each have, each amino acid has one phi and one psi, which means if we know the values, we can plot them in an Ramachandran plot. So I'm going to give values to these. So let's say that the trident here is, hmm, let's make it 120 degrees, and phi is minus 70 degrees on a Ramachandran plot, which plots psi versus phi. These parts right here are zero degrees, zero degrees. This is positive 180 minus 180 and positive 180. So in a Ramachandran, this is a Ramachandran plot right here. Ramachandran, Rama. Ramachandran plot. It is a plot of the psi versus phi, or phi versus psi. It doesn't matter. In this case, well, actually, it does matter. It does matter. The trident has to be on this side, um, and the circle with the line through it has to be on, on this side. So if we were to plot these two values right here, I would go, okay, minus 70 is about here. And if I drag that up to where 120 is, I would put a dot, one dot right there. So each amino acid in a protein, except for the ones that are connected to the N and C termini, have one psi and one phi angle. Those can be plotted on a Ramachandran plot. And on a Ramachandran plot, that will show up as a single dot. So... If your protein has, I don't know, 300 amino acids, you should see 298 dots because the, amino, the residues that are connected to the N and C termini don't count, so that's just the minus two. So you would see just a ton of dots all over this plot. And we're gonna talk about there are certain regions that are allowed and certain regions that are disallowed. But you would see, you should see the same number of dots for the same number of amino acids in the protein, the primary sequence, just minus two. So what do we tell from a Ramachandran plot? That's how we get the dots. But what can we tell from a Ramachandran plot? Well, if you happen to solve the, the structure of a protein, using NMR extra crystallography, you could use the Ramachandran plot to see if it was solved correctly. So here's a plot of the Ramachandran where the allowed regions, the disallowed regions, and the other allowed regions have been labeled. There's also some other really interesting pieces on here. So let's walk through this. So the first thing that I notice on this plot is that we have several sort of layers within it. Now I want you to think of this like a contour map for, say, um, an, an atlas. So the innermost ring, the innermost ring here are the most favorable regions. So these are, if you have amino acids dots inside here, that means your structure was solved correctly. You don't need to mess with those amino acids. You can also have some amino acids out here, which is the other allowed region. So again, this one right here would be in a most favorable region, an allowed region. But out here in this land, this is the disallowed region. If you see dots out here, and I mean lots of dots out here, that means that this structure has some mistakes in it. It has some amino acids that need to go back, be go back and checked. Now, most structures have at least like, I don't know, two to five dots that will be out here, and that's okay. But if you see a lot of dots in this disallowed region, that means that's an indication that that structure was not solved correctly. So that's one thing that you can tell from the structure. 
is where the dots are placed gives you an indication of if the structure was solved correctly. Another piece of information that you can get from the Ramachandran plot is you can tell the um, percent beta sheet and where are you alpha helix? Oh, there you are. Um, percent alpha helix, uh, percent uh, right twisted beta sheet. So if you have, let's say your Ramachandran plot looks like this, and you just have a couple dots down here, you would say that your protein is mostly um, beta sheet and has a little bit of alpha helix. And for the most part, and, and all of the amino acids are in the allowed region, so you could say it's mostly beta sheet, has some alpha helix, but is also likely to have been solved correctly because there are none in the disallowed regions. There are some other interesting parts here that I'm just going to point out. So the collagen triple helix and the left-handed alpha helix are unique pieces. So we will talk a little bit about collagen, but just so you know that collagen triple helix, it's different than an alpha helix. That ends up being in this region right here. Okay. All right. Another way to tell if your structure has been solved incorrectly is to have amino acids in this left-handed region. This is not good. This is very bad. All amino acids, because they are L amino acids, when they come together in a polypeptide, they give rise to the right-handed alpha helix. If the structure has a left-handed alpha helix, it's been solved incorrectly. It's basically completely backwards. So you can only get a left-handed alpha helix if you have R, or I'm sorry, D amino acids. <laughs> I'm get my R's and my S's in my brain. If you have D amino acids, which you'll have and never have enough D amino acids to make a protein. There's only one instance that I can think of of D amino acids, and that is in the peptidoglycan tetrapeptide, and you might only see that if you take microbiology. So this is, this is bad. If you see dots in the left-handed helix and or dots out here, those are indications that the structure was solved incorrectly. That You should be concerned about it if you happen to look it up on the protein data bank. Otherwise, um, if you see dots, again, if you see dots in these regions, it tells you, hey, the structure was solved correctly, and it's mostly beta sheet versus alpha helix. So let's look at it. Okay. Hey guys, this is one of the proteins that are solved. Woohoo. How pretty is it? It's a uh, homohexamer. Homohexamer. Which means that there are six subunits and each subunit has the primary sequence is identical. Okay. So what conclusions can you draw from this Ramachandran plot? This is for tautomerase 2. That's what this um, enzyme catalyzes. Okay, so what you'll see is there's nothing in a disallowed region. So there's nothing in this disallowed region. So that's good. Um, this region right here is for proline. Right? It's not on the previous plot because it makes it too cluttered. But this, this means that I have four proline residues and they're all in an allowed region. So that's good. Um, can you tell just by looking at the Ramachandran plot if it's mostly alpha helical or mostly beta sheet? I would have to say from this, if I was you, and I would say they're almost equal. There might be, it's hard to tell because there's so many clumped right here, there might be a little bit um, more alpha helix than beta sheet. But otherwise, so I could tell, I could tell that there's a little bit more alpha helix than beta sheet, and I have confidence this structure was solved 
correctly. This question right here, we're gonna do this in class. I don't have a very good way of explaining this um, on a slide where you can't see me. So we're gonna talk about this one in class. Okay. Uh, before we get to that example, we gotta talk a little bit more about what exactly is a torsion angle. So right now I've just told you how you can use torsion angles in a Ramachandran plot to analyze a protein structure, but we haven't really talked about what the torsion angle is. All right, so a torsion angle is um, the angle between atoms oops, one and four by looking down atoms two and three. Okay, deep breaths here, people, deep breaths. Let's start with the omega. So we know the omega is defined by the N, the amide nitrogen, to the carbonyl carbon, okay? These are atoms two and three. This is the bond that you look down. The angle is between atoms one and four. So in a peptide, a protein backbone, you know that this has to be connected to the alpha carbon and um, this also has to be connected to the next alpha carbon. These are atoms one and four. So they're all in a line. So the angle is gonna be atom one and four by looking down two and three. Okay, I'm gonna draw this the best way that I can think and again, in class, I'll show you visually a different way to look at this. So let's start with, so you're gonna look down the bond between two and three. So I'm gonna put, here's atom two, and right behind it, right directly behind it, is atom three. Okay, so you're looking down two and three. These are stacked on top of each other. And the angle is between four and one. So if you look at three, atom four is coming up and off of it. If you look at two, atom one is coming down. Okay, so we're looking down two and three. These are stacked right on top of each other, and the angle is between one to four. And if this were a unit circle, hopefully you could see that that's 180 degrees. Okay, now if I switch that, let's say I keep my peptide bond and I want to know the angle of my peptide bond, my, the torsion angle of my peptide bond, but atoms one and four, oops, <laughs> this goes away, but atoms one and four are both down, so again I'm looking down two and three, so those are stacked. Atom number one is still down, but now atom four is also down, so it would be right behind it. The angle difference between one and four on a unit circle here is zero or nothing. Important pieces of information for us to be able to draw the dipeptide. Okay, so that's the omega bond. The phi and psi are, it works the exact same way, only we count the atoms differently. For psi, the trident, remember that's between the two carbons. One of them is the alpha carbon, one of them is the carbonyl. And what comes off of them, I'm just randomly going to assign these up and down, the NH, NH. So again, two and three, that's the angle you look down, and it, or the bond you look down, and the angle is between atoms one and four. And then phi is the only bond that we have left over. The alpha carbon to the amide nitrogen, and I'll just put what comes down off of these down. So this is atom one, two, three, and four. So hopefully that you see through this pattern that you have to have four atoms to define 
a torsion angle. You may also see this as the Newman projections. You have to have four atoms to define a torsion angle within a protein backbone. These are very specifically named as phi, psi, and omega because we only have three different kinds of torsion angles to play with. Okay, so now we're going to do the example. Okay, so we're going to do an example. Actually, I got to... Okay, so here's the example here. I want you to draw the backbone of a dipeptide where psi is 180 degrees, phi is 180 degrees, and the peptide bond is cis. Hopefully you can remember that cis is where their sisters are on the same side, which means that this has to be zero degrees. In a dipeptide, which is NCC, NCC, NH3+, plus. remember this one won't count, COO minus, this one won't count. Hopefully you notice that there's only one of each bond type. H and H. Here's omega. The C to C is the trident, and the N to C is the circle with the line through it. So you know that the angle for this one has to be 180, this one has to be 180, and this one is zero degrees. Oh, I, you know, I shouldn't do the zero with the line through it because it looks like, ah, where's the eraser? Right here, da, 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 da. come on, off you go, bye-bye. Oh no, I can't erase underneath of that. This is zero. I won't draw the zero with the line through it because I think it's too confusing with phi. Okay, so here's how I do it. In a dipeptide, which is the only thing you'll be ever asked to draw because if we have to do too many more of these, it gets really, really hard to do. Start with the peptide bond. So I'm gonna start with the peptide bond, the C to the NH. If the peptide bond, the bond has to be zero, I can just arbitrarily put one of these down because the one coming off of the nitrogen has, can either go up or it can go down, okay? In order to be zero, atoms one and four, this will be atom four out here, have to be stacked on top of each other. The only way to get them stacked on top of each other is to have them both be down. So I'm going to come down here I'm going to erase, hopefully it erases now, there it goes. Come down like this. Okay, so I have successfully, ch -ch check, check, drawn my peptide bond as cis. And this should make sense to you because cis is sisters, which means the things across the bond are on the same side. That means this, um, that means this group and this group have to be on the same side of the bond. Okay, now, um, just for, just for the sake of going in order, let's do psi and then we'll do phi. Okay, so psi, that's this guy. So you're gonna kinda like tilt your head a little bit to see this. So now this is atoms two and three. And if you look at this, the NH, if you look at the, if you're looking down two and three, this NH right here is actually going down. And if we need 180 degrees, your options are you can either go up here or down here. So again, if this is atom two and this is atom three and I need 180 degrees, I need atom four. Um, I actually drew atom four as, so this is four, and this will be one. I drew atom four as down, didn't I? It's okay. Just go the other way. So atom four here is down. If I need it to be 180 degrees, that means atom one coming off of the two has to be up. So I'm going to go up, and that makes... This, the NH3 plus. Cool. And then I've got that bond taken care of. Erase all the extraneous. 
if it will let me. Of course it will not. Oh, there it goes. And then last but not least is the phi or the circle with the line through it. This one is also 180 degrees. Do green here. That's this one. So that's atoms two and three are right here. That makes this one atom one. So again, um, you kind of got to tilt your head here, but this this one between two and three is going down. So this is two, three, and connected two and one. Um, this one is going down. Hopefully you can see that. If it was going up, it would have gone up here. But you already designated as down, which is fine. So that means the fourth atom, in order to get this to be 180 degrees, it can either go up or it can also go down to get it to be 180 degrees. It's got to be up here. So I'm going to draw it up, and this is the OO minus. Erase all my extra bonus stuff here. And it's a little bit messy, but I'm hoping it's not too bad. But that is the dipeptide with a psi bond of 180 degrees. 180 degrees, right there. The omega as cis, that's this one right here. And then the psi, zero degrees. Um, and psi is also 180 degrees, which is that piece right there. Um, you can you can practice a whole bunch of these on your own. All you got to do is change psi to either 0 or 180, phi as 0 or 180, and the peptide bond as cis or trans. Um, the only reason that we're doing 0 and 180s for these is because on a two-dimensional piece of paper with a dipeptide, you can't draw anything other than something that is planar. So food for thought. Not all phi and psi angles are 0 and 180. As you can see from the Ramachandran, they're almost never 0 and 180. Um, but for the sake of drawing a dipeptide, you can only ever draw them as 0 or 180. And that's all that I have for you. Um, practice away. Please come and ask questions. I know this is a super tricky, weird, abstract concept, but I know you can get it. And don't forget how to apply this information to the Ramachandran plot so you're able to analyze whether the structure was solved correctly and the percent alpha helix percent beta sheet within a structure. And um, that's all I got. I'll see you in class. Bye-bye.